On the 6th of March 2015, in the city of Tilburg, a passenger train ran into the back of a stationary freight train. The passenger train had passed a red signal. As a result of the collision, a leak occurred in the rearmost wagon of the freight train, a tank wagon filled with flammable and explosive butadine. There were no serious injuries, and the scale of the leak remained limited. A number of police officers who inhaled the release gas became briefly unwell. The Dutch Safety Board investigated this accident. The two main questions were, how did a train carrying a dangerous substance get involved in a collision? And how did that collision lead to the leakage of this substance? The freight train was travelling from the Camelot Industrial Park in the south of Limburg to Rotterdam. Assembling the train took longer than planned. As a result, the train left Camelot three hours late. This caused the train driver to exceed his maximum running time. It was decided to request an extra stop in Tilburg to change drivers. When this request was submitted, the length of the train was provided incorrectly. Subsequently, the train was routed to a sidetrack which was too short. The rearmost wagon of the freight train remained so close to the switch that the switch retained its occupied status in the safety system, keeping the sign for the passenger train at red. The driver of the passenger train missed the red sign and failed to brake as he approached the signal. Because the sidetracks in Tilburg are not equipped with an automatic train protection system that prevents the passing of red signals, no automatic braking was initiated. Thus, the passenger train was guided onto the sidetrack and ran into the stationary freight train. The investigation revealed that the leakage of the tank wagon could have also been avoided if other operational decisions had been made. The wagon at the rear of the train was the only one that suffered damage. However, other wagons did not carry any dangerous goods. If one of those had been made the rearmost wagon, the chances of leakage would have been considerably smaller. However, this is not legally required. The passenger train was of an old type with no buffers. Therefore, the nose of the train was lifted up over the tank wagon's buffers and collided with the rear wall of the tank, which led to the leak in the manhole cover. A buffer overriding protection device might have prevented this from happening but the tank wagon had not been fitted with such a system, nor was it required to be. The operational decisions like the extra stop on a sidetrack, the placing at the rear of a train of a tank wagon with a dangerous substance, the absence of a buffer overriding protection device on this wagon, and the use of an old incompatible type of passenger train on the same track as trains carrying dangerous goods were taken for logistic and economic reasons. The associated risks were disregarded. According to the Dutch Safety Board, this indicates that safety consciousness among the railway companies involved is too low. As contracting parties, chemical companies also play an important role in risk management. Safe rail transport of dangerous goods is part of their chain responsibility. The Dutch Safety Board calls on the parties involved to use all opportunities to manage risks and therefore arrives at the following recommendations. To ProRail and DB Schenker, ensure that no operational decisions be made that reduce the effect of existing safety measures. As top management, consistently promote the importance of safety. To chemical companies, treat the supply and discharge of dangerous goods as part of the responsibility for the chain and make clear safety agreements with transport companies. To the State Secretary for Infrastructure and the Environment, ensure through national and European regulations that no dangerous goods be contained in the last wagon of a train, and that all tank wagons be equipped with buffer overriding protection devices. To NS Reisigers, do not use train types with poor collision compatibility on routes designated for the transport of dangerous goods.